You know, teen dating violence is an epidemic. Girls between the ages of 16 and 24 are more vulnerable to violence from a romantic partner than any other age group. And listen to this recent study initiated by Liz Claiborne, Inc. They found 43% of dating college women have experienced violent behavior. 43%. About one in five women report being physically or sexually abused by someone they're dating, but the thing is, more than a third of all college students say they would not know how to get help. Enough people agree something has got to be done, and one of those men is with me now, Drew Crescente. His daughter, Jennifer Ann Crescente, was just 18 years old, uh, months away from graduation when her boyfriend shot and killed her. Uh, that man pleaded guilty to the murder, obviously not bringing Jennifer back though. So Drew, uh, we want to talk to you about what you're doing to keep Jennifer Ann's memory alive and really get her story out and change people's lives. First of all, tell me about that day that you got that call. Uh, well, it was in the middle of the night. It was about 4, 4.30 in the morning and um, people were knocking on my door and I was obviously asleep and um, realized that no new no good news comes in the middle of the night. And I had two friends there who had been notified that Jennifer uh, had been killed. Did you see it coming? Did you have any suspicions that she was in any sort of danger? I had no idea at all. And, and this is one of the issues for me is that I did not realize that dating violence was so prevalent at these young ages. I had no idea that this is something that middle school students, high school students, and even college students were dealing with uh, on, on, at such high numbers. And so I had no idea. Tell us about Jennifer. We, we want to get to know her a little bit here. Sure. Um, well, Jennifer was a very sweet girl. Uh, here's a picture of her with uh, her grandmother, my mom. Uh, this is the last time that they saw Jennifer, just a couple of months before she was killed. And um, they look alike. she was a sweet girl. Thank you. Um, uh, Jen's grandmother, my mom is a psychologist, and like her, Jennifer wanted to become a psychologist. And so she was in her last semester of high school and was getting ready for college, as so many other students are at that age. You mentioned that she was getting ready to go to college. I know now you go to colleges and you talk to students because that number is alarming. 43%, almost half of the women that, that were in this study said, yes, they have experienced violent or abusive behavior in their dating relationships. When you go talk to some of these students, what is alarming to you, most alarming to you? Well, I would say first, uh, first and foremost, is, is there's a real issue with awareness. People do not see this as being uh, an issue. They do not recognize it as being an issue. So even if you have almost half of the students being affected by this, if they're not speaking to other students about it, they think that this issue is unique to them. They think that they are in an abusive relationship, but they might not recognize that their peers are in abusive relationships as well. Do they identify that they are in abusive relationships or do they just see it as weird behavior? And then, and then that's another issue. It might be that they see it as weird behavior and sometimes they might not even identify it as being strange at all. If, this, if they're new to dating, they don't necessarily have healthy relationship behavior that they can model a relationship on. Mm -hmm. One of the very common characteristics of an abusive relationship is isolating the, the, the abused person, the victim, in the relationship. But that could be seen as being very endearing. So if you have an abuser who says, I want to spend all of our time together. I don't want you to be with your friends. I don't want you to be with your family because I want to be with you. That could be innocent. Or that could be a way of isolating them so that they are pulled away from their... Um, from their support group and don't have anybody that they can turn to to get some feedback on the level of abuse in the relationship. All right, and, and it, you can see where that could be misconstrued, certainly to people who maybe are not that experienced in dating and thinking this person loves me so much they just want to be with me. So tell me about Jennifer Ann's website where they can get some really great information. I've looked at it, it's a terrific website. Well, thank you. Well, so Jennifer Ann's group is a nonprofit that I started uh, the same year that Jennifer was killed. And on it, we, we supply educational information. We give people the warning signs of abusive relationships. Uh, every year, we run a video game design contest 
for people to design video games about dating violence. We have winning games from the past four years, so we have over a dozen games. They're all online. They're all free. When you go through the game, it will teach you some of the warning signs. At the end of the game, there's the toll-free number for the National Abuse Helpline so that people can go ahead and call if they do need help. We also uh, supply educational information in the form of cards and bookmarks, and we've distributed over 500,000 of those throughout the U.S. and into the U.K. as well. You know, nobody can imagine what it must be like for you on a day-to-day -day basis, but the fact that you're doing something so positive to help other people it's inspiring. I thank you so much for sharing your story, Drew. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's very encouraging to be able to continue to try and do things for Jennifer, even in her absence. Yeah, she will not be forgotten. Thank you so much. Thank you. She certainly won't. He is so brave speaking out and helping other teens. Our thanks to Christy Paul on that.